It's a new phase in the impeachment drama, the public part. Yes, this is the week that the public impeachment hearings began. And yes, it is a big deal because we're a visual people. You're watching this on video. It's how people consume things. It's powerful. It matters. And that's why this is the first week of the rest of our impeachment lives. Here we go, the five big stories you need to remember from the week that was an impeachment in just 30 seconds. Number one, as I just said, the first public hearings began in the Trump impeachment inquiry. Number two, Republicans shrugged off those impeachment hearings as boring. Number three, diplomats said that Rudy Giuliani was looking to dig up political dirt against Joe Biden in Ukraine. Number four, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham said he wasn't gonna watch the hearings, calling them un-American, and number five, but related, two new candidates are in the Democratic primary, Michael Bloomberg and Deval Patrick Dunn. To help me break it all down, I'm joined by S.E. Cup, host of CNN's S.E. Cup Unfiltered and a political commentator. S.E. describes herself as a never Trump conservative, and she's done work within the party to address some of its deficiencies among key demographic groups, such as millennials, minorities, and women. Fun fact about S.E., before becoming a journalist, she was a ballerina. All right, Nessie, let's start super broad, mm -hmm. which is what is the state of the Republican Party today, right? Because we have, I said super broad. Yeah. We have the Donald Trump Party, which is most of Full the stop. Republican Party. Right. Full stop. So that's it. That's it. Okay. Um, well, well that me, was easy. Thank you. Let, let, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me clarify. I mean, Trump has remade the party in his image for sure. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to impeachment, look, Republicans are divided. They're divided over the defense. And we've seen that play out over the past few weeks from he did nothing wrong mm -hmm. to some saying, no, it was real and appropriate, but maybe not impeachable, to others saying this whole thing is rigged and unfair. Uh, we'll have to see how that shakes out. When it comes to what the House does versus what the Senate does, the stakes are different. And so we'll actually have to see uh, just how united Republicans are over the next couple of weeks. Okay, so let's look at what we know. But the Republican Party of, let's say 2010, mm -hmm. seems to me almost unrecognizable from the current iteration. So the question I have is, yeah. people always ask me, well, could, could impeachment change the way that Republicans think about Trump? Given the wholesale takeover mm -hmm. of the party, could it? Well, look, and I think the way you're describing it is the way a lot of uh, us who have eschewed Trump Republican, uh, the Republican takeover eschewed Trump conservatism, we framed it that way, that a lot of what we remember from conservatism, I I've said it's sort of in a coma. It's not dead, <laughs> it's not gone, right. it's just certainly dormant. And so it's been disorienting for many of us conservatives who fondly remember the 20 aughts and the and, and 2010, even 2012. Right. I think no doubt the president and the Republican Party have been seriously wounded in this process and will continue to be. That might affect Republicans who are up for re-election in 2020. Mm -hmm. We yet don't know though if this will affect Trump 2020. Okay, I see. So in the Senate, there are 53 Republicans, which means there are 47 Democrats, and they would need 20 Republicans to cross the aisle in order to get Trump officially out. Does that happen? I am not ruling out the prospect of what I'm calling the, uh, uh, the coalition that could. And if you look at some of the names of people like Mitt Romney, maybe Susan Collins, maybe Lisa Murkowski, maybe Ben Sass, maybe Cory Gardner, some of whom are up in 2020. Joni Ernst, maybe. Maybe. Yep, yep. Jim Inhofe. I mean, right, some, some who are up, some are not. Uh, until 2022, Mitt Romney is not up until 2024. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't I don't think it's impossible that you'd get a few for, for, for one main reason. We tend to think of congressional members in the House, their names in the history books, kind of written in, in pencil. We tend to think of senators' names mm -hmm. written in stone. Yep. Written in ink. And so the stakes are higher. The weight of what a senator yep. does in these very moments. And they is, see it that they way. They know it. They regard themselves they that way. They know that. That's They're right. They're like, House member, that 
that's nice. That's good. You're less but important. Senator. Yes. Is capital S always. And it's true. Yeah. I, they they have a very high opinion of, your, of themselves. But but in this case, in these moments, mm -hmm. that is true. And so voting your conscience, going in history books, as standing athwart the president mm -hmm. on this discrete issue, you might see a number peel off. 20? Don't know. But I think you're not going to see zero. So when we think about the Republican Party post-Trump, it presumes that Donald Trump goes away in some way, Never. which <laughs> he may not. So what does that do? Let's say Trump sticks around and tweets. What does that do to the Republican Party as it tries to remake itself? When you look back at big shakeups mm -hmm. to the parties, um, you have to wonder and look back at what got them out of those shakeups. And there is one school of thought that it will take a Democrat to unite Republicans again. Right. Around, and, and there's, I think there's a lot of truth to that because when I, you know, I'm a never Trump conservative, no plans on voting for Trump, didn't before. But when I watch some of the Democratic debates, mm -hmm. I am reminded, oh, right, I'm I don't also believe not a Democrat. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. And sometimes, you know, it, it kind of takes a reminder, especially seeing all of them kind of out left each other. Mm -hmm. So that school of thought that it will take a far left, maybe progressive Democrat to unite Republicans around their core values again, that's a popular one. Others think it will take a sort of Mitt Romney kind of figure, mm -hmm. a moderate Republican mm -hmm. to bring us back and say, this is not who we are. Uh, we should eschew this and we should remember what our principles were. And remember, they're just dormant. They don't go away. Conservatism as a set of values mm -hmm. still exists <laughs> somewhere in the right. ether, but, but it, it is dormant. And so it's not like those values are gone. They're just, the, the people with the loudest voices just mm -hmm. aren't really uh, talking about them as much. SE Cup, thank you. Thank you, so good to thank be you. on. Here's my big takeaway from that. Essie's point that the Republican Party isn't dead as she knows it, it's just dormant. Parties move in cycles, and yes, this is a very odd cycle for the Republican Party. But the old-fashioned Republican Party still exists. It's a question of when it will make its comeback. Not really if. And that's the point. We make New Point episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and a special impeachment episode like this one every weekend. Make sure to check them all out.